Jamie, are you all right? Gillian, you came for me. Are you hurt? No, they won't lay a finger on me. Not until the new artificial skin is completed anyway. Artificial skin research? You? Gillian, I've got my memory back. All of it. What happened? Tell me, Jamie. They said they'd kill him. They said they'd kill Harry. They forced me. I had to help them with the skin development. They said I had to help them because the professor was ill. Wasn't getting any better. Gillian, the engineer Harry, he's our son. He's been living on his own now for 50 years. Jamie, I'm afraid that Harry's... There was nothing I could do. They forced me. But I can't do it anymore. Jamie! The professor... He just died. He was over a hundred. The professor? What? This old man? Don't you remember? It's Professor Modner. Professor Petrovich Modner. What? This old man is Modner? He's been confined here for three years now, just to develop the Snatcher's artificial skin. Terrible. Doing that to your own father. Whose father? Jamie, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. You really can't remember, can you? Jamie, tell me. Tell me who I am. Uh, what were we doing at the Kremlin? Are you sure you really want me to, Gillian? It's all so awful, but if you must know, I'll tell you. Try to remain calm, okay? Fifty-six years ago, you and I were involved in a top-secret Soviet project. It was still during the time of the Cold War. The gulf between East and West was as wide as ever. Everybody was worried about nukes. At that point, the world's armies were at their largest ever. Leaders still believed that a strong military meant a strong nation. There were rumors that there would be an agreement to end the production of nuclear weapons. On the other hand, the major powers like the U.S. began to get involved in a space weapons race. But not the Soviets. The conservative despots in the Kremlin had another, completely different idea for gaining military superiority. A horrible plan, something no one else would think of. At that time, the countries of the communist bloc were facing an economic crisis. Popular movements pushing for democracy were springing up all over. Communism itself was facing extinction. Facing pressure from the reformers, the Kremlin began to panic. And that's when that horrible, childish plan was launched. And that was the Snatcher Project. Replace your enemy's leaders with puppets of your own. Then you control their governments, their economies, take over a country from the inside out. That's right, Gillian. And to develop these robots, they assembled some of the most brilliant scientific minds from around the world. Some of them were even brought in against their will. At the crux of that development effort was a group called the Frankenstein Project Team. You and I were members of that team, Gillian. It was a four-person team led by the late Professor Modner here. The robotics expert was Professor Modner himself. His son, Elijah Modner, handled genetics and microbiology. For nanobiology and picobiology, myself. And for behavioral science and psychology, you, Gillian. Early development was carried out at a lab in Novosibirsk, but was later moved to a secret facility under the Kremlin. At the time, the Glasnost and Perestroika movements were gaining momentum, and they rightly feared for the existence of the program if it should become known. But some of the reformers did learn of the project, and they conspired with the U.S. to block it. Gillian, you were a CIA special agent sent by the United States to infiltrate and sabotage the project. I was CIA? Yes, and the government knows that. That's why you were assigned to the Junker team. What? Who am I? Work on the project continued to go smoothly. But then, on June 6, 1996, there was that accident. A mysterious explosion at the Chernotin facility spread a bacterial weapon that was under development there into the atmosphere, destroying the country and the project. Gillian, was it you? Did you set off that explosion? What? You can't be serious. You think I caused the catastrophe? So 
Somehow, during the confusion, Professor Modner and our son Harry managed to get picked up by American agents. But we couldn't get out in time. You and I and Elijah. In a shelter below the Kremlin, we entered a cryogenic sleep. Our plan was to sleep there until the toxic effects of the bacteria were safely passed. And then 48 years later, three years ago, we were discovered by the 17th Special Investigative Force. Yes, but when they found us, Elijah's pod was already empty. Elijah Modner? That guy whose picture was in the church? The one that looks like random? That's right, Elijah is alive! Elijah is here and working on the Snatchers. Why don't you let me finish your little story? Who's there? It's been a while, hasn't it, Jamie? Ah, yes. And Gillian. It's me, Jamie. Elijah? Is that really you? Random? No. Not quite. So, you remember me, do you? I am Elijah Modnar, the only son of Professor Petrovich Modnar. I'm afraid I've grown somewhat old and feeble since we last met, however. Elijah, why are you doing this? Your father, Professor Modnar, he just... He passed away a few minutes ago. What? My father? My father is dead? Elijah, what... What happened to you? The Elijah I knew could never do anything like this. I've changed, Jamie. These 40 years have changed me. I can't believe it. What happened to you? What happened to me? Jamie, do I actually have to explain it to you? Jamie, it's you. Your beauty is the cause of all that has come to pass here. Fifty-seven years ago, I was obsessed with my research, yes, and with you, Jamie. At the time, I was still young, having just graduated with my genetic engineering degree. My father's connections got me on the team, and there, I met you. You were working as my father's assistant. Your beauty, your smile, I was stricken. I saw something in you that I never felt with women of my own country. You warmed my cold, young heart, Jamie. You opened me up, and I couldn't stop my feelings. Elijah! Oh, I was so happy. The political situation was crumbling around us, but every day was a joy. I gained my father's trust, and with you there watching over me, I was able to work as hard as I ever have on the project. happiness did not last for long. Gillian, it was you. You showed up and all was ruined. You arrived and joined our project team. Far from home, Jamie found comfort in a man from the same land. Your relationship grew quickly, and all I could do was stand by and watch. Jamie and Gillian fell in love, were joined, and even had a child. Harry. Even then my feelings for you only grew stronger. Worried about me, my father tried to have me removed from the project, but I persisted. Jamie, I always wanted to be near you. And then... The democratic movements that had consumed the rest of the Eastern Bloc spread to our country as well. The Cold War was over. The hardliners who had pushed for its development were stripped of power and the project was cancelled. The reformers trying to cover up the existence of such a crazed project ordered that all materials related to it be destroyed and that we stand trial for our actions. Jamie and Gillian were to be returned to their homeland. That's about the time that I learned that you, Gillian, that you were a CIA agent, and that you were trying to pass documents on our research to your military. The country had sold us out. I'm 
no politician. I couldn't care less about what happened to the country. All I cared about was my research and Jamie. And I was to lose all of that, everything. For someone so young, you cannot understand how great of a shock that was. Elijah. That is when I decided I swore I would see that secret craze project through to the end. At the time, the bioroids were 80% finished. The main part, their endostructure, was essentially completed. But we still were having trouble with the artificial skin. The area that Jamie and I were assigned to. We called it artificial skin, but there was of course no need to duplicate T-lymphocytes, Langerhand cells, or endocrine cells. All we needed was keratinized cells and melanocytes to provide the pigment. With the artificial protein development techniques that we had in those days, full-scale synthetic cell development was very difficult. Research like this took months, years. The original project called for us to simultaneously snatch an entire country. In other words, a whole nation or an entire city had to be snatched over the course of one night. For that reason, a powerful biological agent which could quickly and effectively kill the population of the country was being simultaneously developed. Lucifer Alpha. That's right. A type RAO11 virus which another team was developing. For someone like myself, who was closely involved in the project, blowing up the lab was quite a simple task. My God, Elijah, do you know what you're saying? That explosion killed half the world's population. I moved all the materials and records essential to the Bioroid project into the shelter and executed my plan on June 6th. After sealing off the lab, I brought the two of you with me to the underground shelter and we entered a cryogenic sleep. But not before I programmed an atmospheric research satellite to transmit a wake signal when the danger from Lucifer Alpha had passed. And ten years later, Lucifer Alpha naturally mutated into a non-toxic form. But the automatic revival system failed to work. Oh no, no no, it worked. Just as planned, it revived me ten years later. A little sooner than the two of you, of course. But even though you sealed the lab with the explosion and everything, you should have been exposed. Why weren't you? Oh, I was. But by that time, the vaccine L Angels had already been developed. So everything went just as you planned it then? Yes, up until that point. But my real struggle was yet to come. My original plan was to revive Jamie as well, and for the two of us to finish the development of the Bioroids. You, Gillian, you were to stay asleep forever. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Not after looking at Jamie's peaceful face there in the pod. Besides, I could never have convinced her to work with me on the project anyway. I knew the time was not yet right, so I changed the timers of your pods to permanent on. How? How could you do such a thing? And so for the next 40 years, I worked alone in that cold and lonely room under the Kremlin, trying to complete the artificial skin for the Snatchers. For days and days, no one would visit me. I never saw the sun or felt the changing of the seasons. Still, I always had Jamie by my side. You were always there for me to talk to. Just you and I for 40 years in that dark cellar. Oh, you poor, poor man. And then, three years ago, my research was finally completed. First, I snatched the Siberian Special Investigative Forces to establish a transport route for the Snatchers. And then, to test the effect of large-scale Snatch operations, I chose Neokobe City to be my experimental sample. Neo Kobe is cut off from the surrounding areas, a sort of miniature country in itself, making it a perfect test site. And since it's a melting pot of various races, it would also allow me to gather extensive data on snatcher modification and operational techniques. 
In addition, the element of suspicion or mistrust, which runs deep in Japanese culture, was another reason I chose this site. But your test revealed a critical flaw in your machine's artificial skin. Yes, quite unexpected, I'm afraid. All my research for 40 years. I gathered data and worked day and night to find a solution, but nothing seemed to work. So that's why you decided to bring Professor Modner here, right? That's correct. I discovered my father in one of the government's hospitals. He was old, but still very sound of mind. Naturally, he would not cooperate with me. Of course not. He'd never become involved in something like that. So, unable to receive his assistance, I decided that I had to have yours. But a mistake on my part allowed both you and Gillian to be taken into custody by the authorities first. Just what are you trying to accomplish, Elijah? You must know you can never get Jamie back. I'm only interested in discovering what I can of the human animal. In the past, it was because of Jamie. My motive is different now. It sounds like you're just suffering from the wild arrogance that corrupts so many scientists. Humans are such weak creatures. No matter how much they trust one another, the tiniest speck of suspicion can destroy it all. Look at how the Snatcher problem has caused such wild unrest. No matter how much science advances or how high we set our ideals, we eventually begin to suspect each other, to hate each other, and then to kill each other. The Snatchers are nothing more than a tool for bringing out this reaction. I am simply using the Snatchers to elicit the true nature of the human animal. I think this experiment has shown me the limits of human society. I sincerely doubt it will be able to reach any greater level of prosperity on its own. If human society ever hopes to reach greater heights, what is needed is an absolute leader, a firm ruler who isn't affected by these trivial episodes of mistrust. You're crazy if you think people would ever obey snatchers. Of course they wouldn't. But if they don't know, they cannot object. There has been a time in every age that the people have longed for a god to lead them. As long as they give the people no reason to suspect them, then they can easily become their gods, indeed, a new race of super-beings. We are almost there. Once we perfect the artificial skin, Snatchers will transcend man to become this planet's true human beings. But you'll never get your perfect skin now. Professor Modner is dead. I no longer have any use for my father. I have a sample of the new skin he developed. Once I've analyzed it, I'll be able to make as much as I need. Or if need be, we could simply culture the keratinized cells, epithelial cells, and melanocytes in the quantities that we need. What are you talking about? How could you get a sample of perfected artificial skin? Why don't you take a look at this? We found this in the rubble of Queen's Hospital. Random! Oh, an acquaintance of yours? He's... he's a snatcher? That term isn't exactly accurate. This bioroid was constructed by my father without my knowledge. He modeled it after me in my youth. He built it right here in this facility. And not only that, he programmed it to destroy Snatchers. This bioroid caused me serious difficulties. It's designed and built far better than my Snatchers. The machine itself thought it was human. My father input memories for it all the way back to childhood. Those two were apparently mine. Haven't you yet realized? Random Hajil is Elijah Modner spelled backwards. How like my father, silly old man. He did virtually overnight what I could not do in 40 years of effort. Furthermore, he makes a Bioroid so perfect, even the Bioroid itself believes itself to be real. What's more, 
The cells of the skin he developed are self-replicating. Once in place, no further transplants or culturing is necessary. Is he dead? Its main and locomotive systems are completely shut down. It's just scrap now. But the artificial skin is being kept alive. This we need. With this, we can move to phase two of our plan of full-scale infiltration of the world's major nations. The summit's already over. You'll never succeed. What does the summit matter? Nothing holds us back now that we have this perfect skin. We can go anywhere we want and there will be no way to tell us apart. I will have free control over the world. Nothing will be able to stop me. Politics and free thought will no longer have any meaning. My will alone will decide the course of human history. You egomaniac. Do you think you can snatch the entire population? There's a fully automated snatcher factory under the Kremlin. Even as we speak, scores of new snatchers are being born. But no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to snatch the people's heart and soul. What do you hope to gain from this anyway? Jamie, the human race is composed of fools. But I, I am different. I will be its savior. Indeed, not just of mankind, but of all life on the planet. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Metal! In ten minutes, this church will be struck by a phased particle beam. I am guiding the beam from the attack satellite using GPS and 15 navigational satellites. The beam cannot miss. Everything in a two to three kilometer radius from me will be destroyed. Stop this foolishness now. I will not have my research destroyed by some souped up pocket calculator. Metal, what happened at the summit? The delegates, worried about the snatcher menace, voted unanimously to allow the use of nuclear weapons on the city. The military is presently imposing a quarantine on Neo Kobe. What? Do they intend to kill everybody? The populace is in a state of panic. However, they have agreed to lift the quarantine if this church is struck by the phase particle beam. This is our last chance. I will handle things here. Gillian, Jamie, you two must flee. You insignificant mass of metal. You'll never... One move and I detonate. Gillian, run! Metal, this is crazy! We can't let a single snatcher get out of here. And this new artificial skin has to be destroyed as well. I will not allow some talking scrap pile to get away with this. If you were the aiming point for the beam, then I'll just have you thrown out of here. Grab this little one and take him out of here. You always were a real pain in the butt. What's that? What? How did... You were supposed to be deactivated. I don't go down that easy, old man. Stop this foolish... <sighs> Shut up! Let's try to make our final moments peaceful, shall we? And you snatchers, you touch the little guy and the old man's head comes off. Random. I've always hated being used. Why don't you watch the final act with me? Gillian, you only have five minutes. The turbo cycle is just outside on standby. Use that to flee. Let me go. I'm Elijah Modner. I'm your original. I don't care if I'm an original or a copy or what. You and I are gonna die right here. If we both die, there won't be a copy anymore now, will there? The stupid logic of a simpleton. Of a machine. Whatever it is, it's my will. Machines have no will. Machines cannot sacrifice themselves. We'll see about that. You have four minutes. You must go. 
Gillian, even if these memories in my head are fiction... Yeah, I know what you mean. Our memories of our time together are all too real, Random. Gillian, you become one hell of a junker. Gillian, it has been most recreational being your partner. Oh, metal. If you can, try to pick up the pieces for me, okay? Like we did for Little John. Little John? Okay, Metal. Hurry! You only have three minutes! Thanks! Thanks, you two! Jamie, come on! No! Don't let her go! No! You pathetic old fool! You don't even know how to love someone! You stupid machine! What is that idiotic grin supposed to mean? By snatching you, I'm finally gonna get my real self back! Random, there's less than one minute to go. Thanks to you, everything will be fine. You don't owe me any thanks. Sorry to get you involved in such a big job. You did great. You're a hell of a junker. Kid! So you're really going, aren't you? It's our responsibility, too. Besides, if I go to Moscow, I may get some of my memory back. And if that happens, I'll be able to love you even more than I do now. Wait for me. I want to be with you, but first I've got to destroy this terrible factory of theirs. Jamie, when I get back, let's try living together again. What do you say? We'll be waiting for you, too. Katrina! Mika! You're here, too? You better be happy, Buster, with all these beautiful women seeing you off. I'm happy you came. Uh, uh, let me introduce my, my wife. Jamie Seed. I suppose it's a little odd introducing myself a second time, though. What do you mean? Uh, you've never met them before, have you? What are you talking about, Gillian? We're good friends. Huh? Uh, since when? It's the first time I've met her in person, but I've spoken with her on the video phone a lot of times. What? Have you guys been talking about me behind my back?
So have they finalized what they're going to do about Junker operations? I suppose this will end up being our last mission, huh? Well, originally they were planning on disbanding the team, but now they've decided to keep us in business. So that means... That's right. We've been designated as one of the government's special police divisions. That puts us above the regular cops. So the government has decided that crime by machines poses a bigger threat than crime by humans from here on out, huh? They've chosen the new chief, too. So when you get back, you'll get to meet the new head honcho. Well, it's comforting to know I've got a place I can come back to. Whatever you do, just come home safe, okay? When you get back from this job, you still have a dinner date to keep with me, you know. Don't worry. I won't forget my promises to either of you. Oops, oh, almost forgot. Of course, I'll want to spend some private moments with my wife, too, huh? Uh, uh, what's wrong, Jamie? Harry and I will be waiting for you to get home. That's Harry's hat. We can do it this time, Gillian. Not some fake couple like before, but with love and trust. I know, Jamie. Take care, Gillian. I'll see you, Jamie. Wait! Wait for me! Take me with you, please! You? Metal? Yes, sir! We didn't have a good frame to work with, so this is just a temporary body. Just call me Metal Gear, Sega CD for now. So they found your memory chip in one piece, eh? Random protected it from the blast of the beam. Random, huh? Wait a second. I've heard that sneeze somewhere before. Really? I didn't hear anything. Anyway, I want to know if you'll take me with you. Please, Gillian, please take me with you. Hurry up and get on board, partner. Yes, sir, Gillian. History. Suspicion has always bred conflict. The real conflict, though, resides in people's hearts. This conflict has just begun.